Gar, the Atari 2600. What a great console that for many started the home console craze. You know, you think of Mega Drive, you got Sonic, you think of the NES, you got Mario, the Turbo Duo 2, you've got... Hang on a minute, what did the Atari 2600 have? Well, reports indicate that before the overly talked about video game crash of 1983, it was actually going to be Bentley Bear from Crystal Castles. However, that vision never happened, and just like Crash Bandicoot being the unofficial mascot of the PS1 era, Pitfall, or Pitfall Harry as he was eventually known, was in most people's eyes the go-to mascot for the system. Welcome to Slope's Game Room. Now when making these videos, I love looking at the inspiration behind the game. You know, what was going through the mind of the designer? Did it become the ultimate game that he or she wished for? Maybe, just maybe, there's an interesting series of events that led to the creation of said game. Well this one is going to be a little bit quicker, because after reading an interview with designer David Crane, he said, I sat down with a blank sheet of paper and drew a stick figure in the centre. I said ok, I have a little running man and let's put him on a path. Draw two more lines on the paper. Where is the path? Let's put it in a jungle. Let's draw some trees over here. Why is he running? Draw some treasure to collect, uh, enemies to avoid and Pitfall was born. The entire process took about 10 minutes and about 1000 hours of programming later the game was complete. So yeah there you go. It's safe to say that giving David Crane a 10 minute timeout, some paper and a pencil, it's going to be pretty good for your game company. To say the game was a success for Activision is a crazy understatement, as it stayed at that number one spot for the system for 64 weeks in a row. The game was crazily well received by critics and gamers alike. Just check out this quality old school advert featuring a pretty big Hollywood star in his first ever role. Just last night, I was lost in the jungle with Pitfall Harry, surrounded by giant scorpions and man-eating crocodiles. Guess who it is yet? Hello, this is Jack Black. You're listening to DJ Slope. <laughs> yep, Jack Black even got involved with promoting the game. Just last night, I was lost in the jungle with Pitfall Harry, surrounded by giant scorpions and man-eating crocodiles. So what's the game like? Well, straight off the bat, it's fair to say the game has aged. Fair enough, as of the making of this video, it's 34 years old. Sure it has clunky controls, stiff animation and it has its fair share of cheap deaths. But damn it, the game is still fun to play. You play obviously as Pitfall Harry and you run left to right dodging all manner of bad things such as scorpions, crocodiles and quicksand in an attempt to collect all 32 treasures in the 20 minute time limit. Not an easy task, not at all. In fact, you're probably going to need to use a map that will help you through the game, just like this one from Atari Age. So yeah, in hindsight, it's easy to see that back in the day with games looking like this, or this, or this, or even this, that Pitfall was going to end up becoming such a big hit, selling over 4 million copies. So big in fact, that it was one of the early examples of the actual games designer becoming a noteworthy name to have as part of the title. And about a year and a half later, they dropped the exclamation mark and swapped it for the legendary designer's name. Here it is, David Crane's Pitfall 2 Lost Caverns. Now there is quite a bit to talk about in this version, so let's start with that original Atari 2600 version. Wow, just look at this game. How advanced is this? Possibly one of the very best looking 2600 games, period. Fluid water movement, slight hints towards actual scrolling, <laughs> even a soundtrack. The game is without a doubt a massive jump over the first game. Activision really did put the time and money into this one, that's apparent for sure. 
Gone is the pretty much endless runner feel game of the first and instead we have a far more traditional platformer which includes swimming and moving down to several different rooms, <coughs> sorry, catacombs. Overall it's just a great game. Again you're in search of that treasure, you got checkpoints in this game making it far more playable and although you may argue the game seems easier, it's really not. Sure you cannot run out of lives per se or even time. Every time you do lose a life, you end up floating back to your last checkpoint. But the game is such a decent size with lots of exploring and different styles of gameplay, you're not really going to be getting bored with this one. Now right in the middle of the two games, Pitfall becomes so popular that he ended up getting a short-lived Saturday morning cartoon show and gained a couple of sidekicks. You got a mountain lion and a niece. Well, they ended up in this game too. Go find them and get yourself even more points. David Crane's Pitfall 2 The Lost Caverns is an absolute must for any owner of the old dusty wood smelling system. So how was this game actually possible on a system that previously had games like Adventure where you play as, well, a square? Let's get technical. You know those old school cartridges? Well, they can only really hold a certain amount of space. And although Pitfall 2 came out very close to the end of the 2600's lifespan, one year before this beast came out in fact, they only really had about 8k of data to play with. So David Crane actually made a custom chip to go inside the cartridge, called the DPC, also known as the Display Processor Chip. It gave them a whopping 2k extra to play with. That's an extra 25%. And let's be honest, looking at the game, that extra 2k went a very long way. David Crane actually ended up patenting the DPC in a hope that it could be sold to other developers to bring new life to the aging system. However, lurking around that corner was the earlier mentioned ugly video game crash of 1983, so it never really happened. Anyway, there was actually two re-releases of the game dubbed the Adventurer's Edition and basically are the equivalent of buying a Game of the Year edition nowadays. The same game with a tiny bit extra added. A year later, good old Sega got involved and managed to get an arcade version of the game out and is probably the ultimate version of the game, if you ask me. And also this version was ported over to the MSX. Talk about taking an already great game and smearing it with that classic 80s Sega shine. This is nothing but a win, win, win for me. In my opinion, although take this of a nice chunk of me loving Sega way too much for my own good salt, it's the best version of the game. Also, it reminds me of the Lost Stars and that's never a bad thing. However, we are still not done. While Sega was making this version, Activision was making Super Pitfall for the NES. Yet again, another remake or port or reimagining or whatever it is of Nick Crane's classic Pitfall 2. But let's face it, rather than taking inspiration from this, I think we can all agree where they took their inspiration from. However, other than the look of the game, this game, just like James Rolfe said, it actually plays quite badly. The controls are clunky, the music is over repetitive, everything is just very below average. Yet again, another forgettable under par NES game that's been covered to death online. I think that we've spoken about David Crane's Pitfall 2 quite enough. Let's move on to the very best release in the whole series. The game came out on several different systems, but for me, I always found myself drawn to the fantastic Mega CD version of the game, mainly because of the soundtrack. Plus this version and the 32X and PC versions all had a few extra areas not found in other versions of the game. 
So, as seen by the intro, you actually do not play as Pitfall Harry in this game, but instead, you play as his son trying to save his kidnapped dad. Hell yes, just look at those graphics. This is classic 16-bit era graphics pushed to the absolute max. The fluid animations, gorgeous pixel art graphics that make you smile. Sadly, the controls take a little getting used to, but master them and you have a definite solid game here. What I like about the game is, yeah, sure, it's your standard, very similar to Jungle Book style gameplay. But if you're a fan of the franchise, it actually captures a few elements from its Atari 2600 routes, like the open and shut pitfalls, swinging branches and collecting treasure. Everything about the game looks and feels like the best that the system could pump out. Go and get it for your desired system of choice for a fairly reasonable price, all things considered, in the retro arena. And do what is right and go and save your dad. I don't look for adventure, sometimes it just finds me. Like when I was swinging through the South American jungle and I saw this glimmer. Yeah, a crystal. And when I grabbed it, a rift opened up. Out popped, whoa, Mira. Cute little mocha. She started gabbing on about this pure energy stuff called lucence that comes in two flavors. The blue stuff's good, and the red's no cherry. Now one moku got a little too excited with the red lucence and turned into the scourge. With the Red Lucents, the Scourge imprisoned all of the Mokus and put a force stone over the city. The rift started closing. Hey, beautiful girl, suicide mission, I'm in. Yep, your ears aren't fooling you. That is Bruce Campbell, the legend that is. He actually voices Pitfall Jr. that was released for the PlayStation. It's actually not too bad a game, all things considering. Not great, but still pretty fun. But then again, that could be because Bruce Campbell continuously spouts one-liners all the way through the game. As you can see, it tries its best at keeping the classic elements alive, but in a 3D world. The game seemed to get around about 7 out of 10 on average, and I think that still holds up today. It's a good game, not great, but definitely not bad. Go and check it out if you get the chance. There is definite fun to have here. Now, if you lose the 3D, you get Crave Entertainment's Pitfall Beyond the Jungle for the Game Boy Color. Obviously, it's doing everything it can. But in all honesty, the short time I played with this one, I didn't have much fun with it. So, yeah, let's just move on. So here we are in the original Xbox, PlayStation 2 and GameCube era with Pitfall The Lost Expedition, the fourth game in the franchise. This time you play as Pitfall Harry once again and well, just look at this. Doesn't it look like Jack and Dexter? The game however doesn't play quite as well as that legendary game, but still it does play pretty well. I had great fun playing this game, it's a solid 3D platformer with really nice graphics and that's even by today's standards. Sure the hit detection isn't perfect and sure from time to time you go to grab a ledge and end up just falling off, but it's not too bad and thankfully doesn't take you out of the game in experience. One thing that sadly does is the amount of backtracking you're going to be needing to do in this game. You can't get through this door or this area until you unlock this section and as a result you'll be finding yourself backtracking a lot. On average the game got about 7 out of 10 and again I think they've really hit home with that one. The game is good. Now this game was also ported and renamed to the Wii as Pitfall the Big Adventure and if this game was only slightly above average then this game is massively below average and that's all thanks to the ridiculous insistence on motion controls. Instead of just pushing up to swim forward, you have to waggle your controls like a maniac until you get a dead arm and then find yourself at a dead end when you realise you need to do loads of that backtracking I spoke about earlier. And well, if you're like me, you just give up. This should have been the ultimate version of an already good game, but sadly, it's not. Strangely enough, 
there actually was a Game Boy Advance version of the game that I had a really good amount of fun playing. Not only does it look fantastic, but it has enough gameplay variety to make me actually want to keep going throughout the game. This is really not a bad game at all. Now sadly the game does have a few areas that make it quite a chore to play, but get through them and it changes up quite a bit in the next area. It's most definitely worth keeping an eye out for. Like I said, I had great fun playing it, and I think this one's definitely worth checking out. And in all honesty, it's definitely better than the awful Mayan Adventure port released on the same system. After this, the original Atari 2600 game started getting ported to Xbox Live and Windows phones. However, the final release of Pitfall, so far, wasn't until 2012, simply named Pitfall. For the, yeah, nice try. It's a free to play mobile game. Don't click away yet. The game is actually surprisingly quite fun, I suppose. It should be obvious to all you guys that this game follows that popular Temple Run gameplay that was pretty damn big when it was released a few years back. And, well, it's fine. Is it better than Temple Run? Uh, yeah, I suppose. I had fun with it while sitting on the bog. <sighs> Sorry, I find games like this as nothing more than a passing breeze. But hey, if you like mobile phone endless runners, you might want to check this one out. It's probably one of the best ones out there. Okay, so that's all that's been released from the franchise. So far. But David Crane did have another attempt at creating the ultimate follow-on in a 2.5D platforming adventure. And he did this on Kickstarter. He was asking for a crazy high $900,000 and he ended up getting only $31,207 from 669 backers. I wish I had more to show you guys from this game, but the Kickstarter page didn't even have a video showcasing the game. No demo was made, no footage, all except this tiny video of apparently an ultra realistic jungle released later in the Kickstarter's life. But other than some concept art, that's all I really have to show you guys. And it's one of the main reasons, in my opinion, that the Kickstarter failed. The whole idea, from what I can tell, has been scrapped, with the website promoting the game not even active anymore. But you know what? That's fine by me. Because all that leaves us with is a series of games that are all good, or possibly even brilliant. The Pitfall franchise could have been something milk dry until it became a joke that nobody was interested in anymore. Thankfully, that never happened, and what we got is four or five semi to solid good games, and their ports. If you're a fan of platforming, whether it be 2D or 3D, you can't go far wrong in looking at the history of these Pitfall games. Hey guys, thanks for checking out my video. If you want to check out some more of my videos, click the links that you see at the top of the screen. If you haven't already, please rate, favourite, comment and subscribe. And if you want to support the show that little bit extra, come and check me out over on Patreon. This is DJ Slope signing out, and hopefully I'll see you all next time.